it's Missy from the Bookland, and it is day four of Graphic Novel Week. Today's review will be of The League of Regrettable Superheroes by John Morris, which is a collection of bizarre and quirky and obscure actual comic book characters throughout the history of comics. The synopsis to the book, as well as links so that you can add it to your Goodreads or pick up a copy, are in the info, so if you're curious, make sure to check that out. But really, that's all you need to know, so I'm gonna get straight into what I thought of this. And what I thought was that it is a lot of fun. I honestly think that this would work for just about everybody. I think most people would be amused by this. Whether you are a fan of comics, whether you have a familiarity with them or not, and let's face it, I'd say most people have at least a passing familiarity with them because they're a huge part of pop culture. But even if you're not, just flipping through, it's all very short. Typically each comic gets like a two-page spread, so something about the comic and then pictures or a cover of the comic. Occasionally it will have a few more pages with more material, but for the most part it's just a page. So it's a great thing to pick up and just flip through, find something that catches your eye, and read a little bit about it and be amused by the quirky bizarreness that this thing ever came into being. And I think most people could appreciate that whether they are fans of comics or not. I mean, you really don't need to be a fan of something to be able to enjoy the funnier aspects of something. It's kind of an easy in, I would say, for people. For real diehard fans of comics, though, I'd say it's probably a must-have. It's a great thing to have in your collection from the sort of esoteric point of view, to have the information about them, to have a cover and what they looked like, to find out who drew it and how it came about, who published it, all of that, I think is great for a collector. And I think just passing fans and people that are just getting into comics will really be amused by it, and it might inspire them to kind of seek out some of these weird unknowns. For me, it's just pure fun, and I really like the way it was put together. It's not the type of book that I would want to sit down and read cover to cover, though you certainly can, and I think it would be amusing. Um, but for me, I want to be able to just discover something new each time I open the book, so I chose not to read it cover to cover, though you certainly could, and it's readable. It's very engaging and well-written, it's got a real tongue-in-cheek style, so it would work on both levels, but I think personally it would make a really great coffee table book to just pick up and open to a random page and be like, oh, the red bee, <laughs> what in the world? Do people even still have coffee tables? It's separated into three sections, the Golden Age, the Silver Age, and the Modern Age of comics. And the Golden Age is definitely my favorite, because let's face it, pre-war and World War II era comics were crazy. It was anything goes, the rules were still being written, and they were all bizarre and being churned out, you know, new ones all the time because it was this new growing form of media and everyone was jumping on the bandwagon. So a lot of crazy things came about during that time and I was just cracking up reading it. And you get the impression of the style through the writing and the way John Morris talks about the comics. The Golden Age all feels like it should be read in like a fast-talking, wise-cracking movie voice, you know? Um, so for instance, from the excerpt on The Black Dwarf, which was known for its colorful language, <laughs> there's a little section that says, Ixnay on the horseplay, my noble knave, or I'll pop lead pellets into your gizzard. <laughs> Knowing that that made it to print just amuses the hell out of me. It just kind of all builds into that quirky kitsch wheelhouse, I guess. There are great unknowns like Dr. Hormone, or Fat Man, the human flying saucer. Real comics, folks. These existed. Or Madame Fatal, who is kind of the Mrs. Doubtfire <laughs> of the superheroes. That's a man. Or even Nightmare and Sleepy, because nothing strikes fear into the heart of the criminal mastermind, like the Cape Crusader, Sleepy. Or even Squirrel Girl, which I'm not even gonna lie, would make an awesome cosplay. There was nothing that I disliked about this. The way it's put together, the diversity of what's shown, and the wealth of knowledge that's provided, but in a fun, entertaining way and not an encyclopedic way, um, it all just really works. And as I said, I think it'd be great for just about anyone. And that is what I thought of The League of Superheroes by John Morris. As I said, the synopsis and links to the book can be found below, so check that out if you are interested. And if you have a favorite quirky, weird superhero, definitely let me know in the comments because I can't get enough of these now.
But that is all for today. I will see you guys tomorrow with another comic review. Until then, thanks for watching and happy reading!